Welcome to the lecture on dynamical phenomena in insulin glucose regulation. Part 1. Altradian oscillations in insulin and glucose. My name is Olga Sosnovtseva, Department of Biomedical Sciences, University of Copenhagen. Let us recall basic biological aspects of insulin glucose regulation. It was known that insulin and glucagon act together to maintain homeostasis of blood glucose levels. When blood glucose level rises, beta cells of pancreas are stimulated to release insulin into the blood. Insulin causes the liver to take up glucose and convert it to glycogen. Insulin also causes most cells in the body to take up glucose. As a result, blood glucose level declines to a set point, stimulus to insulin release diminishes, and body returns to homeostasis. When blood glucose level falls, alpha cells of pancreas are stimulated to release glucagon into the blood. Glucagon causes the liver to break down glycogen and release glucose into the blood. As a result, blood glucose level rises to a set point, stimulus for glucagon release diminishes, and body returns to homeostasis. Now we will discuss mechanisms underlying ultradian oscillations that are two for hours oscillations observed in certain studies of human insulin glucose regulation. Oscillations with similar frequencies are known to occur for other hormones, although mechanisms are not likely to be the same. Let us focus on two experimental observations. Investigations of the interaction between insulin and glucose in humans are typically based on data obtained with a sampling period of 1-2 to hours. Such studies traditionally suggest that the regulation displays a stable equilibrium point which is forced by meals or other variations in food intake. However, experiments performed with a shorter sampling period, for example 10 minutes, higher sampling accuracy and a constant food intake suggest that the equilibrium point might undergo a hop bifurcation and start to display more or less regular oscillations. On this basis, we will consider hepatic glucose release as a possible mechanism of such oscillations. We start with basic model. The so-called flow diagram provides a one-to-one -one representation of the equations of motion. Boxes represent state variables that are accumulations of physical or chemical entities of different types. For example, the amount of insulin in the blood compartment. Valves represent flow variables. Together with the fully drawn arrows, the state and the flow variables represent the conservation equations of the model. Finally, the encircled variables together with the dotted arrows represent control that the state variables have on the flow variables, causal relations. The present flow diagram allows us to follow the flow of insulin from pancreatic secretion via the plasma and interstitial spaces to final degradation in the liver or in the muscle and fat tissue. The first state variable describes the amount of insulin in the blood plasma. The amount of insulin in the blood plasma is changed by the pancreatic insulin secretion minus the hepatic insulin degradation and minus the rate of insulin diffusion into the interstitial space. One of the related flow variables describes the rate of hepatic insulin degradation. The rate of hepatic insulin degradation is given by the amount of insulin in the blood plasma divided by the lifetime of insulin in the liver. In a similar way, one can describe other state and flow variables. 
This figure illustrates the result of simulation with the basic model of insulin glucose regulation. The timing of the meals and their sizes in terms of amount of glucose are specified externally. For a healthy person, the increase in blood glucose is accompanied by a rapid increase in plasma insulin concentration. The stable equilibrium of the system is soon restored by the rapid degradation of insulin in the liver and by the removal of surplus glucose from the blood. Interesting experimental results are observed when the sampling period is reduced to 10-20 minutes. The first experiment was done during daily food intake. A ringing phenomenon showing damped oscillatory behavior builds up in connection with each meal. Another series of experiments was performed during constant internal nutrition and during constant glucose infusion. One can detect oscillations with a period of 80-120 minutes. Different biological mechanisms could cause such oscillations. Additional experiments showed that oscillations failed to reveal correlations with counter-regulatory hormones such as cortisol and glucagon. Oscillations can be observed after a pancreas transplantation and therefore do not depend on signals from the brain. Oscillations disappear under glucose clump conditions and therefore cannot depend on the activity of pancreatic pacemaker. Oscillations might appear due to additional feedback associated, for instance, with the hepatic release of glucose. A causal loop diagram is a diagram that helps to visualize how different variables in a system are interrelated. The diagram consists of a set of nodes and edges. Nodes represent the variables. Edges represent a connection or relation between the two variables. Positive link means that if the node in which the link starts increases, the other node increases as well, and vice versa. Negative link means that if the node in which the link starts increases, the other node decreases, and vice versa. Let us see how to construct extended model. Extended model includes additional relation marked in red in this figure. By storing surplus glucose as glycogen, the liver serves as a temporal buffer for the blood glucose. Hepatic glucose release with an activation delay of the order of 20-60 minutes could represent a likely mechanism for oscillations. The main feedback mechanism in insulin glucose regulation is negative. The same is true for hepatic glucose feedback mechanism, although duration of the delay plays an important role. The structure in so-called in red is a new suggested structure. To formulate a mathematical model, we should write a differential equation for each state variable. The first equation describes changes in the amount of plasma insulin, taking into account insulin secretion, insulin exchange with interstitial space, and hepatic degradation. The second equation describes changes in the amount of interstitial insulin, taking into account insulin exchange with interstitial space and tissue degradation. The third equation describes changes in the amount of plasma glucose, taking into account hepatic glucose release, glucose uptake, and glucose consumption. Model includes also delay of hepatic glucose release, described as a third-order leg equation. There are several nonlinear functions representing causal relations. 
Let us compare simulations and experimental observations. Simulations were performed with different infusion rates of external glucose. Concentrations of plasma insulin and plasma glucose were plotted as functions of time. One can see that model produces self-sustained oscillations with a period of about two hours. However, oscillations occur only in a limited region of parameter space, marked in blue in the figure, that corresponds to normal operating regime. For very small and for very large blood glucose concentrations, the system demonstrates stable equilibrium that is outside of blue area. This slide shows experimental results on the effect of subjecting self-sustained oscillations to, to an external forcing. Blood samples were taken every 10 minutes and examined for glucose, insulin and p-peptide used to calculate insulin secretion rate. With constant glucose infusion, one can observe self-sustained oscillations. Two other figures demonstrate results obtained for a slow and relatively faster oscillatory glucose infusion. One can see how frequency of self-sustained oscillations changes with respect to infusion rate. Here we observe example of one-to-one -one synchronization phenomenon. If the period of external forcing becomes longer, one can observe that internal glucose and insulin concentrations become locked to the forcing frequency in two-to-one synchronization. This implies that pancreas delivers two pulses of insulin for each peak in the external forcing. Through a simple example of insulin glucose regulatory system, we have shown that feedback loops are important because they allow living organism to maintain homeostasis. Usually there are many parameters that can determine stability of the feedback system. Self-sustained oscillations and synchronization phenomena play an important role in regulatory systems.